by way of kind of situating this whole system uh, at the, in the larger scale, there are these loops through the basal ganglia at at least these five different levels. So we have uh, kind of a very core uh, supplementary motor area. It turns out there is no loop in the basal ganglia involving the primary motor area, which is another indication that uh, basal ganglia is always making kind of a slightly higher level decision. It's not really into the final details of exactly how you're moving your muscles. It's more about what should I do, which, you know, at the lowest level here, it's, it's you know, should I reach for something? Maybe should I say something? Maybe different kinds of lower level motor control things, but not at a really fine grain level. Here we have decisions about where you're going to look in the oculomotor frontal eye field system. Um, and so each of these has these kind of stereotypic loops uh, going into the striatum area. And then there's a corresponding thalamus layer uh, that then loops back up and interconnects with a uh, corresponding motor area. And then these are the kind of closed loop circuits that come go back onto themselves. So this kind of closed loop circling back on itself. But each of these also has an open loop aspect where in fact these higher level areas typically uh, and other sources of sensory information are coming in and helping the basal ganglia here in the striatum decide what to do. Okay, giving more information for that final decision making process. So here's the eye loop, then we have these uh, three kind of very interesting loops here, uh, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, orbital frontal cortex, and cingulate. And this dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is the part of the cortex that is most expanded in, in people. Rudimentary aspects of this are present in rats. Um, and so this is where we can make really high level elaborate cognitive plans but these orbital and cingulate areas we think are really important for more kind of motivational drive. And so here's our uh, cartoon to understand this, where uh, in general we think that the orbital frontal cortex, which is so named because it's kind of right above the orbits of your eyes, is important for representing outcomes, things that you want. Outcomes are kind of specific things like a uh, chocolate milkshake or, uh, you know, a nice, uh, Chianti, um, some kind of, you know, specific outcome that you desire, okay? Um, and then utility is a little bit more abstract, and it is kind of intermediating between these kind of desired outcomes that are represented in, in orbital frontal cortex and the plans, the ways of getting those outcomes. So right now, if I want to go get a chocolate milkshake, I have to get in the car and drive to you know, in and out burger or something, and that's gonna be a lot of work. It's late at night, it's not even open. Um, so that plan does not make a lot of sense. And so the utility, even if I really want that chocolate milkshake, um, the utility part of my brain in the anterior cingulate cortex considers the costs and the overall kind of like uh, feasibility, the negative downsides, and integrates that with the value of the outcomes and gives us a kind of overall estimate of like, how good is this plan really? Um, so between the two of these, the ACC and the OFC, they give us a really good sense of like, okay, from a kind of affective, motivational perspective, how, how likely is this to succeed? How good of a plan is this? How much is this gonna give me something that I want? And those are really critical signals that you wanna have uh, to evaluate for a variety of different possible plans of actions. And so one idea is that you kind of iterate through sequentially thinking of different things. Well, okay, maybe I can't actually go to the store and get that milkshake, but maybe I could just go to the fridge and make the milkshake myself. Okay, now I have to make noise and I have to get out the blender and, you know, all these different kind of possible cost benefit trade-offs can be computed by sort of interactions among these different brain areas. And so we think these are really the kind of core of this overall central executive in your mind that's sort of figuring out what it is that you could do to get the stuff you want and then settling through a kind of interactive constraint satisfaction, attractor-like dynamic there, settling on something that actually kind of fits and makes sense. And when it settles, you go, aha, I got a plan. And then that kind of activity is being reflected down here into the corresponding striatal areas. And they are also kind of essentially 
weighing again in this go no go way is this really a good utility is this really a good outcome is this really a good plan each different level is kind of evaluating its kind of corresponding signal but it's also getting all these inputs from these other areas so the the final decision of saying yes i'm going to do this particular plan gets a lot of important input from the utility and kind of outcome areas to say, yeah, that's actually what I want to do. And so these neurons here in the striatum, learning again through this experience of dopamine signaling, can really learn to evaluate the overall likelihood that these kind of overall plans up here in cortex are actually going to succeed. And so again, the striatum, the basal ganglia, this is the input layer of the basal ganglia, is that kind of buck stops here. This is where I'm going to make my decision. This is where I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. And then once those kind of high level plans have been activated, engaged, and kind of locked in, they then influence the kind of more uh, kind of actual operations side of the system. So this is the high level executive part of the system. And over here in the action side, we have kind of where you actually have to make each individual action as you go through this plan. So I have to get up, go, if I went decided to get in the car versus make the make it myself, each of those is a different plan of action. And so that's how this part of the system contributes. And this is actually a major chunk of, of frontal cortex uh, areas uh, six and eight uh, that are important for doing these kind of things. And they are ubiquitous whenever we do any kind of action, cognitive action, motor action, there's a large part of your frontal cortex that's involved in kind of carrying out those step-by-step -step actions, putting them in the right sequence, um, et cetera. But again, this is much higher level, uh, kind of at the level of you know hundreds of milliseconds in general, compared to what the details of ex actually executing each of these things in our motor system at the cerebellum is performing. And there's a lot of data out there anatomically about how these different parts of your uh, kind of decision-making circuitry are informed by subcortical inputs. And so this is a map where we've got the anterior cingulate sur surface here in the medial, kind of very midline, right slice down the middle part of your frontal cortex. Um, that's where the anterior cingulate cortex is. Um, and so there's different sub areas of that. Uh, the mo more posterior areas may be kind of more where the effort is encoded. And then these more anterior areas like this perigenual area right around the knee of the corpus callosum may be particularly important for kind of integrating the overall utility and kind of motivating us once we've decided this is what I want to do. This is kind of the thing that energizes you to actually do that plan. Um, down here in the subgenual ACC may be actually a more uh, outcome coding area. So it's not a perfect alignment with these different brain maps, um, but this is an area that's been indicated in major depression and maybe kind of a primary negative affective area in the brain. And then more laterally, you have this OFC now, we're presenting these kind of more positive affective outcomes that might motivate you to go uh, get something. Uh, those then shade into these kind of olfactory, visceral taste areas in the insula. So these are really a big part of a kind of coordinated system. And there's multiple levels of abstraction and detail. So you have more abstract kind of like, I like this kind of, and neural patterns in there mixed in with like, you know, that particular chocolate milkshake with that multi taste, you know, so all levels of detail in there. Um, and then uh, that then shades out into the more ventral lateral uh, frontal areas. And so in the anterior cingulate cortex part of things, um, it's very nice that they are very kind of anatomically proximal to these SMA and dorsal lateral prefrontal areas. So the SMA is essentially kind of that effort area of the action area of uh, what am I actually going to do? And that then the, air, the anterior cingulate area proximal to that essentially encodes the effort associated with what are you going to do? So the actual actions you have to take have a cost. That cost is encoded in that anterior cingulate area right below it. And then that gets coordinated with these more high level decisions about overall plans. And as we go more anterior into this Broadman's area nine, that's where we get into this kind of really high level decision making in the DLPFC. Um, and it's associated ACC 
is really where we're evaluating overall utility. And so most neuroimaging data and data from monkeys, et cetera, is pretty consistent with this overall story. So we have a pretty good idea overall about how the different brain circuits work in this large scale kind of plan of how decision making gets carried out in these fronto basal ganglia kind of frontostriatal circuits. And it really, again, is a complete interacting system. You can't pull apart each of these and, and uh, changes in, in, in the basal ganglia or in the frontal cortex are going to have very important implications for overall function of the system.